Welcome to an example on how to solve an initial value problem involving a Cauchy-Euler differential equation. A Cauchy-Euler differential equation fits this form here. We're looking at the terms on the left. For each term, the degree of the coefficient, which is a function of x, equals the order of the derivative. We can solve a second order Cauchy-Euler differential equation using an auxiliary equation. Two of the forms are shown here. We'll be using the form on the left and the solutions of the auxiliary equation give us the information we need to find the general solution to the differential equation. Where if we have two distinct real roots, this is the form of the general solution. If we have two real equal roots, this is the form of the general solution. If we have two complex roots, this is the form of the general solution. In each case, we assume x is greater than zero. So we'll first form the auxiliary equation. Notice a is equal to one, b is equal to negative 11, and c is equal to 85. So the auxiliary equation, because a equals one, would be m times the quantity m minus one. And then for plus b times m, we'd have plus negative 11 times m, or just minus 11m and then plus c is plus 85 equals zero. Now we'll clear the parentheses, so we have m squared minus one m minus 11 m, that's minus 12 m, plus 85 equals zero. Unfortunately, this is not factorable, so we'll have to solve this using the quadratic formula shown here. So we would have x equals negative b would be negative negative 12 plus or minus the square root of b squared, that'd be negative 12 squared, minus four times a, which is one, times c, which is 85, all over two times a, which would be two times one. So simplifying, we have x equals positive 12, plus or minus the square root. The square of negative 12 is 144, and then we have minus four times one times 85, which would be minus 340, all divided by two. Continuing to simplify, we'd have 12 plus or minus the square root of 144 minus 340 is equal to negative 196. And the square root of negative 196 is equal to 14i. So we have 12 plus or minus 14i all over two. Simplifying, we have 12 divided by two plus or minus 14i divided by two. So we have x equals six plus or minus seven i. So because the auxiliary equation has two complex solutions, this will be the form of the general solution. Where alpha is equal to six, and beta is equal to seven. So the general solution is y of x equals x raised to the power of alpha would be x to the sixth times the quantity c sub one times cosine of beta is seven. So we have seven times natural log x and then plus c sub two times sine of seven natural log x. And again, this is assuming that x is greater than zero. So now we'll use the general solution and the initial conditions in order to find the particular solution. Let's do this on the next slide. In order to use the initial condition y prime of one equals negative four, we'll have to find y prime of x, which will require the product rule. Will let x to the sixth be the first function and all this inside the brackets be equal to the second function. So y prime of x is equal to x to the sixth times the derivative of this sum. Well, the derivative of this first term is going to be c sub one times negative sine seven natural log x times the derivative of seven natural log x, which would be seven divided by x. So we'll have negative c sub one sine of seven natural log x times seven divided by x plus derivative of the second term is going to be c sub two cosine of seven natural log x times seven divided by x. And then we have 
plus the second function, which is all of this, times the derivative of x to the sixth, which would be six x to the fifth. Let's write that as six x to the fifth times the sum. Now let's use the initial condition y of one equals negative three and y of x to form an equation involving c sub one and c sub two. So we'll substitute one for x and negative three for y of x. So if we substitute one for x, here we'd have one to the sixth times c sub one times, well natural log one is equal to zero, so we'd have cosine zero, which is equal to one, plus c sub two times, again natural log one is equal to zero, sine zero is zero, so we'd have all of this equals negative three. Simplifying, we'd have one times the quantity c sub one plus zero, or just c sub one equals negative three. And now we'll use the initial condition y prime of one equals negative four, so we'll substitute one for x and negative four for y prime of x. So we'd have one to the sixth times, again, when x is one, this is natural log one, which is zero, sine of zero is zero, so we have negative c sub one times zero, times seven divided by one, plus c sub two, here we're going to have cosine zero, which is one, times seven divided by one, and we still have plus six times one to the fifth, times the quantity, Again, here we're going to have cosine zero, which is one, so we have c sub one times one, plus here we'll have sine zero, which is zero, so c sub two times zero, and all of this must equal negative four. So simplifying, here we just have one, so we can leave that off. Inside the brackets, this will be zero, so we just have seven times c sub two, plus here we'll have six, and then inside the brackets we just have c sub one plus zero, so we have six times c sub one equals negative four. But we also know c sub one equals negative three, so we have seven times c sub two plus six times negative three equals negative four. Seven c sub two minus eighteen equals negative four. Seven c sub two equals, adding eighteen to both sides gives us positive fourteen, so c sub two is equal to positive two. So now that we know that c sub one equals negative three, and c sub two equals two, we'll perform these substitutions for c sub one and c sub two into y of x to form the particular solution. So we'd have y of x equals x to the sixth times the quantity, again c sub one is negative three, so we have negative three cosine of seven natural log x, and then c sub two is positive two, so we have plus two times sine of seven natural log x. So this is the solution to the initial value problem. Going back to our first slide, we know our solution here, x to the six times the quantity negative three cosine of seven times natural log x plus two sine of seven natural log x. Notice how we need to be careful with the parentheses. I hope you found this helpful.